I'm, I'm going to try to review this as best as possible because I know some of you who are watching this are not Kenyans. Some of you who follow me and actually watching this are more of, you know, from different countries. So bear with me on this. I'm just going to review it the best that I can because it's from my country and I just watched like four episodes and I have, I had a, I had such a great time with the show that I felt the need to actually talk about it. So big girl, small world follows Shiko. Shiko is like a plus size um, woman, career woman, who's, you know, trying to navigate the world after a scandal. You know, today we know about sex tapes. You know, they get leaked everywhere every now and then. But can you imagine being a successful person and then a sex, uh, a sex tape is released and you are like in the media space and then it goes out there. Can you imagine how brutal it can be and the damage that it can do to your career? Now, I know some of you are listening to this and thinking to themselves, ah, some more work stuff. Oh, God damn it. We don't like this whole work stuff. The, the good thing about this show and the reason that I had to talk about it, it is that it's not one of, it's not work. Even the plus size element, the body positivity-ness of the show, it's only used to anchor the show every now and then to actually remind you that this is a plus woman but everything else around it is more of comedy some funny stuff from a plus a lot of drama there's a stand-up boyfriend called Kasim who's very interesting he just he's just one of those scandalous young people who will destroy any woman that they come across because it's just it's just it's, it's a comedian he's a stand-up comedian but he has his own issues so every character has their own act but but then apart from Kasim uh, Shiko also has a friend who is also one of those friends who will come to your life and sometimes influence you positively, other times just mangle everything up and just she's just dis disastrous. She has a, pro a problem of her own and Shiko has a problem of her own. So there are so many other very colorful characters around Shiko. There are, there are more drama around Shiko away from the plus sizeness of it all that make the show interesting. For example, there is her mother, there is her parent. After, after the, what are the consequences of a leak of a sex tape on an ordinary person? You know, especially a plus size person. You know, it, it's disastrous because the parent at home. If you if you live in Africa, you know how serious parents are about image. You know, the, there's a certain image that you're supposed to maintain, especially if you're taken to a good school, you got a good job, and then you get a bad a boyfriend that goes against the parents. And then something like this happens, the parents will turn on you. The parents will give you a very, very difficult time. So we get to follow Shiko as she tries to try, you know, try to navigate this space whereby there are parents who, you know, they are, they are like, why, why have you done this? They are, they are on her case. And the mom has a good reason for doing that because she also has her own story. Uh, the, her sister has her own motive. Her brother has his own motive, but they are all... If you're a Kenyan, there are a lot of things that you recognize about this show. Now, outside that, she's also fighting for her career. You know, it's the media. She's, she's a radio presenter, a really good one and a really popular one at the same time. So she's battling this thing. Uh, she's, she's trying to battle this thing as much as trying to get her career back. Because after the sex step is released, She's given that leave, you know, and you know what, what it means when you're told you're given a, a mandatory leave. You know what that means? Basically in the media is that you have been replaced, you know, and she is replaced by this other character who now becomes like her arch nemesis. So it, 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 it's a very, there's a lot of drama away from what people may think because it's written by all female writers. And so you obviously think written by f women uh, about a plus size woman. This is going to be work. The messaging is going to be strong. But if you're a Kenyan, most of the things that they showed in this particular episode are very, very familiar. There are a lot of tropes and archetypes that can, a Kenyan can only fully understand. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that the Western people or people from different countries cannot understand it. Yes, they can. But for a Kenyan, the, the experiences that are displayed within the show are very, very familiar to us. You know, the, the, there are moments when he, when she goes to the shards, I mean, to the rural area. So there are some things that happen there that are very common with African parents. There are things that happen in a bar when uh, Kasim is talking to a friend 
that you know happened in the border happened in the modern world so it, it's it's a very good show that is possibly going to be ruined by that idea that it's a, it's written by women and it's about a plus size woman yeah, it's strange to say this because that's how that's how Shomas is pushing this product. But I think there is more to it than that. There is uh, an element of how middle class people survive in Nairobi. You know, because it focuses on middle class families or not necessarily family, mi middle class young people. You know, people who are not doing badly, they are doing okay, but still they are struggling. And the challenges that come with relationship, the challenges that come with friendship, the challenges that come with parents. So, so there's, there's a good element of that that is not being used to promote this product. They are all about the plus size girl. They are all about, it, it was written by, but there's just more to it. The comedy in itself is, mm, especially there are small things like the podcasters within the show. So when they pop up, they just add so much value to, to the show. In terms of technicalities, there is the white shots and the drone shots. So when you, when I was watching the drone shots in this movie, uh, in this show, I was like, this is one of the best use of drone shots because drone shots naturally in Nairobi or Kenyan shows, they they, they spend like the first five to ten minutes just showing uh, the Nairobi skyline with that slow shot. They just take them ten, take their times with, with the drone shots, with the wide shots, the establishing shots. So they usually take, it's, it's so slow until it becomes annoying. But this one, they knew exactly when to cut. They just, this is Nairobi, we are done, let's move. So you go into the scene, you do whatever you're doing. So they've moved to the house. This is the house, let's move on. They don't have those establishing scenes and the B-rolls don't stay on your screen very much. That's a problem that Kenyan productions have generally. So yeah, in the, again, music wise, they play a lot of, Kenyan music, like modern, I wouldn't call them like super modern, but modern enough for the millennials to actually get it. So there are a lot of songs that, you know, we know, not because we've heard them on radio, but probably because we've streamed them a lot of time. It, it, because the age of radio is kind of dead, so we are more into streaming. So there are a lot of songs that I have streamed a lot of times within the show, and I thought they were cleverly you know, printed into the film. The other thing that I thought was also really good was stand-up because Kasim's, Kasim is a stand-up artist and right now in Kenya the stand-up industry is actually growing very very fast. Uh, th th there are a lot of groups. We used to have comedy, comedy, com comedy performances, I wouldn't call them stand-up, but within the last uh, seven to ten years we started seeing young people really get into the stand-up stand space. And, and, and this show, at least for the first like three episodes, really captures well the you know the nature of the changing space of the entertainment industry in Nairobi. Um, the other thing, the direction is very good. It's from Nick Mutuma. Nick Mutuma is a Kenyan actor who has previously directed like two other movies. There's Sincerely Daisy, and there is another movie called um, You Again, which is on YouTube. I don't know if I'll leave the link be below. It's on YouTube. The, 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 he directed it with a, a Kenyan writer called Natasha Kemani, who is like one of the biggest Kenyan, not female. I'm not going to put that. I'm not going to you know, you, you know, reduce her to being a Kenyan female writer. She's actually one of the best Kenyan film writers today. Yeah, she's actually really good. Uh, Nick still uh, produced the show, so he produces with a guy called... Kelvin Jewe and Kelvin Jewe and Nick uh, sometimes I think I, I saw something like they both directed some episodes but generally the whole show was created and directed by Nick Mutuma as I said former actor now a director so this is a very interesting show oh man there's so much I could talk about in terms of the positives there's the editing the editing is also very very good the the way they the, the way they also treated the you know the Nairobi skyline they added things within the Nairobi skylines that make it different because it's not just a skyline for the sake of being a skyline there are things that they added that actually make everything interesting uh, in terms of negatives if I was to look for something negative if, if I was to be petty if I was to be like uh, you know yeah, obviously it cannot be perfect there is something, there's something that has to be wrong 
There is a character called Kwame, played by Fidel. Ah, same dude. He's, he's exactly the same guy that we've... I know Fidel. I've met him, like, every... A, a few... Yeah, I've met Fidel. And he's actually the same, same... I, I, I don't want to say he's the same character, but the character of Kwame looks and feels like Fidel. Yeah, the costume and everything, he looks like... Fidel. So every time I was looking at Kwame, the character in the show, I was seeing Fidel. Number one in terms of costume, number two in terms of how the character was written. So I thought that was a bit... Uh, the other thing that could be, could be a nitpick, but this is just pushing it to the edge, to the absolute edge to look for something that is wrong, is the fact that, yes, they say that it was written by all women, but I don't see the influence. I don't, I, I don't see that translating into the show. Because if you are not told that it was written by women, you wouldn't know that it was written by all women. At least for the for the four episodes that I saw, there was not. You didn't have that thing that tells you that wow, this looks and feels different. Yes, it's very well written. It's a very well written show, but you don't see that thing that makes you think, oh, this is written differently, or this is written. It's it's it's, it's written towards you know maybe one group. It just feels evenly written. The it just feels well written. You don't get that idea that it was written by this particular group. As I conclude my video, shout out to the costume guys because wow, there are some scenes that you look at the rural areas and the, and the way the people are dressed there, totally different from what the people are dressed in the urban centers. You're in Nairobi. So the Nairobian are dressed differently the people in the rural areas are dressed totally differently. And even in the urban areas, there are different people dressed according to their personalities. So I thought that was also really, really cool. I thought that was really well thought through. Because at no point do you get... If you are to see Kasim, that silhouette of Kasim, you will instantly recognize him based on his costume. If you are to see... Um, who else? If you are to see her best friend, I'm forgetting her name. You can just tell by the, you know, silhouette of her costumes. So I thought those were very good points. The performances are fantastic. The mom, especially, apart from Shiko, who is awesome, she carries the whole film. She does a great job. Then there is the mom. Yeah, the mom sold that mom that we all know as a Kenyan very, very, very well. She's dramatic. She's all over her daughter. She, you know, she is what the story needs her to be. So basically that's it. If I was to give this out of 5, I would give this a solid 4. It's a very, very good show. If it was not marketed as a show written by women about a plus-size woman. If they just marketed it as a middle-class story that follows the challenges of millennials trying to navigate, you know, this modern world where technology is, is just ruining people's lives. That would have been a better way to sell it. Because sometimes marketing can choose, you know, what is trendy or what is popular to market a product and that can end up maybe sometimes derailing what they actually have because in terms of just entertainment what they have with this product it's a very very entertaining show it, it's far more bigger than how they are portraying it i don't know if i'm making sense so it, it's it's a solid four for me um if you have show marks or if maybe you come across big girl small world somewhere in the universe Give it a try. Give it a try. Give it a chance. You'll have a great time. So basically, that's it. Remember to always watch what you enjoy and enjoy what you watch. Thanks for watching this. If you are a random guy from a different country and you've actually go, you've been through this review. Thanks for being here. Uh, if you ever come across this show, just give it a chance. It's on Showmax Kenya. I don't know if Showmax is. Uh, I know that Showmax is around Africa. But if you ever just come across this show, give it a chance. It's actually a really, really, really good one. For the, you know, for the followers who always like my work, who've always watched my videos, at this point, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. See you on the next one. Adios.